Hello there everybody, this is Grant, my son is The Collector 75 and welcome to my second Hacking My Super, Ni well, Super Nintendo Mini uh, video. Now then, uh, through this, uh, on my, well actually on my last video, um, and to be honest I didn't show as much as I wanted to show, mainly because I didn't have a lot of time and it was more of an ad, li ad lib sort of thing, I just sort of done it just off the cuff really. Uh, but this time I've had a bit, I've, I've had a week off so I've planned out what I sort of want to show and what I want to get done really. Uh, this isn't a tutorial or anything like that. It's basically for those people maybe that don't know, haven't really seen it, are just a bit curious about it maybe. Just show you how easy it is actually to do it. And actually, it's actually very safe as well um, for your machine. Uh, so anyway, so as you can see here, um, I've got my camera obviously on a table aimed at my TV screen because um, that is the only way I can do it. I don't have the, like, the video capture that most people seem to be able to do. Uh, so anyway, so this is basically starting off. Uh, so what you need, obviously you're going to need your Super Nintendo Mini, uh, mine is the Europe one obviously because I'm in England, and then we're going to need a few extra little bits. Now this doesn't actually cost you a lot to do this. Um, this little bit here which is a USB on the go adapter, so obviously you've got, I'm trying to do this so you actually see it because I've got this um, automatically focused on my TV, otherwise it keeps zooming in and out and it's bloody irritating. So anyway, so as you can see, so it's got a port there to go into the USB connector. And then we've got another, just get it in the light there, you see, you can see where well, you can plug your USB cable in. And of course, and on this side, you've got your USB memory stick. Uh, that cost me about two quid off eBay from China. Uh, it took a while to come, but, you know, it was the best one. Um, there is another one I've got, I think I showed it on my last video, which is this one in here, which um, I wasn't too keen on. I got this originally, which has got like three USB and stuff. One of them takes the uh, USB input lead. Um, I didn't really like that one. Didn't get on with that one too well. And then we're going to need a USB memory stick, um, £10 off eBay, and that is all you're really going to need to buy. The rest of this is all free. Now then, here we go. Right, so I'm going to show you what you need. Uh, so first of all, you're going to need to go on, is it Get Get GitHub, Get Hib? I can't remember, but I'm going to put all the links in the description below. Uh, you're going to need to download, uh, let's have a look what we've got. We've got, we're going to need to download the hat sheet. You can see it just over here, this one here, I'm highlighting here with my little arrow. You're going to need to download this one. Now, there are a few versions of this. Um, they keep releasing new versions every few weeks, month or something like that. Usually bug fixes and whatever. Uh, the one I got, I downloaded mine back in about, I can't remember now, it was around February time. And it was the Hatchy 2 CE version. Uh, it's, that stands for Community Edition. And that was where other people had added a few little extra bits to try and um, make it a bit easier to use, easier to run. And to be fair, that is the best version to get. This one here, which I have um, I call the folder Hatchy New, just so I can differentiate it between a few I've, I've got on my computer. Um, I haven't actually used this one. This one looks a little different if I show you. It, uh, it, I'm not quite exactly sure how to use this one. So we're going to go into here. As you can see, these all download in zip folders. You're going to need a program to unzip a 7-zip folder, which I didn't have, which was a bit annoying. But luckily, my computer found it online, and it was able to download it, because my computer is very old and very crap. So um, it, was, it sorted it out. So if I can do it, anyone can do it. Anyway, so then when you go into the folder and then you're presented with this folder. Uh, this is what you want to run, the little hatchy over here. So then it, yeah, we just double click on that if it wants to. There we go, and then we come up run. I'm just going to do this one. I'm going to show you this one, but then I'll show you actually what I use. Uh, so this is the new one. Uh, so it comes up with this and you can down, update it and everything like that. I'm not going to bother that because um, I'm not actually going to use it. Uh, let's have a look. There we go, there we go and get rid of that. Not too bothered about that. So you're presented with this, and this is the basic running screen. Uh, we're gonna you can change your system depending on which one you've got. If you're in America, you want to change this to the Super NES USA. But I'm in here, so I'm the Super NES Europe. Of course, obviously you've got Japan, Famicom, and everything like that. So you click oh no, I don't know. Uh on this one, I don't know. Leave it on that one. And then what you're gonna need to do, you're gonna go to kernel, and this is the bit I don't understand on this one. Uh, on the one that I'm going to use, it's slightly different. It comes up with an option, basically just says flash custom kernel or something like that. And that's your start process and it does it all for you. This one doesn't have that, it has something else and all this. And I don't know which one I'm supposed to use on this one. This Hence why I've not used this new one. Um, yeah, so I'm going to close that down and then I'm going to show you the one that I actually do use. 
Right, so first of all, uh, well, apart from that, which you need to download, it does come with a few H mods, which are the emulators, so you can actually use uh, all different games with your Super Nintendo Mini, but you will need to download this, which is KMFD Manix Core Set. Now he is, he's a good bloke, he's actually on YouTube, um, if you look for Kaland K Manic, or is it actually might be that KMDF Manic, I'm going to put a link to his channel, he's the one who actually makes a lot of these along with a few other people like Mad Monkey and some other people, um, he really does a lot and if you ask him a question on his YouTube channel you can actually get him on, is it the GitHub or Reddit, one of the two, uh, he does get back to you with an answer, he, he genuinely wants to help, he's a really nice guy. I've asked him loads of questions to get around a few fixed things I didn't really understand. Because um, I believe me, I'm not computer minded or anything like that. So anyways, you need to download his. Um, I'll provide a link to where his latest core set is. Um, and then you go into that. And then I've got a few of his. Um, every time he downloads, uh, sorry, he comes up with a new one. They have new files. Uh, we, this one it came with this one. This is the advanced music hack, but I'll go into that in a minute. Uh, and then you just go into one of these. Don't matter which one I'm just going to show you. And so we get all these, uh, some of the extras, you have different things, you've got PSP, we got tools, because some games aren't easy to upload to your SNES Mini, it does take a lot of work, uh, mainly PlayStation and Sega CD, they can be a bit of a pain in the arse, um, mainly just time wise, once you know what you're doing, it's easy, but oh my god, it can be a headache, and not every PlayStation game I've got to work, which is a bit annoying, I've got some, which I'll show you a bit later on. So anyway, so there were your H mods and everything like that, but I'll show you them in a second. Right, so let's use my one, right? So what I'm gonna do, I've put everything on my little memory card, so I'm gonna stick this in now. Put that in the side just over here. And I'll just wait for that to load in. And then I'm gonna show you just how easy it is to add a couple of games, right? So then we go down here, go to compute, and then we're gonna go into this one. Uh, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is when you, if you're gonna use the USB, um, you can't actually put them all on the Super Nintendo memory, but it's only got limited memory. Um, it's the same process for putting it on the USB as it is to the internal memory. Uh, it's just obviously a USB can hold as much information as as well as the basic size of the memory card you buy, really. If you want to buy 128 gig, you could put pretty much anything on there. Um, I've got 32 gig and I've got loads and loads and loads and there's still, I've only used like 10 gigabytes so I've still got about 18 gigabytes to go. Um, so anyway, so then um, what you want to do, um, I'm not going to do a tutorial on this, uh, there is a few others, there's a guy that, um, Gavin Horrocks, he did a good one, that's how I learned how to do all this. And Pattern Plays, he does good ones. <clears throat> but I'll try and put links in the below, in the description below for pretty much everything. Uh, right, so anyway, so then what you're going to need is you go to this one. These are folders I created for the USB, which you need to do. But if you watch the con uh, the configuration, uh, sorry, if you watch the tutorial that um, Gavin Horrocks did, it'll show you all these. It's easy. Because all you do is you'll create a folder called Hatch in a folder called uh, Tool, and then you put this folder, which was this one over here, into here. As you can see, it's all the same. But this is the Hatchy I use. This is a, an older version of Hatchy. But it's the best one, and I when I get on with best because I know what I'm doing. So anyway, right, so it comes up with this. Get rid of that. So I'll go to kernel. It should have some different. See, here we go. See, and we got flash custom kernel, and this is what you do for the first time. You flash that. It dumps your original memory um, into. I think it's a dump folder, which you need to keep your original memory because if you ever want to revert it back to the original states, which you can at any time, that's what you need to really put back in. Um, and obviously, like I say, if you wanted to flash back the original one, it would be in a dump folder. Uh, and that's it. Then, obviously, here we have all our games. Now, these are the original games it comes with. Um, it keeps all the... Even if you've used your Super Nintendo and you've got loads of save states, it saves everything. It, it will not erase anything like that, which is really, really good. So these are all the games that I put. I put Atari 2600 games. Um, mainly, these are all games that mean something to me. That When I was little, um, we I used to play Combat. Oh my god, Jesus Christ, me and my brother used to play combat. Pitfall, Raiders of the Lost Ark, now it's the most worst game I've ever played, but I just remember it from when I was little. Same with E.T., what you had to do, I had no idea. Um, and then we've got Turbo Graphic 16, these are pretty good. Um, they're just basically updated versions of NES games, <laughs> but they're pretty good. So that's alright, I don't mind that. Now then, I do have this game, which is the NES Famicom Disk System Transformers Headmasters. Uh, 
I can't get past the, the startup screen on that. And then we got some Nintendo NES games. Um, I thought I put uh, some games on here, uh, Castlevania, but I never did. Um, so I'm going to show you how to add those in a moment. Then we're going to go to the Super Nintendo. I've got loads of Super Nintendos. Usually I only put games on that I've liked playing or was interested in playing. I've got a lot of uh, Super Mario World hacked games, um, which I like. I've got, so oh God, where am I going now? Um, got a bit too far now. Where are we? Want to go back this way, don't I? Because uh, we'll come to all those. There's Sega Master System and everything like that. Yeah, so I've got uh, Super Probotech. To, where is it? Come back up here. There it is. Super. That is the um, European version of Contra, and I liked that because it had two robots rather than two army guys, which is always good. These are all the other games I put on. At first, I was having some issues running some of the Super Nintendo games, but then I found out what I had to do, which I'll come to in a moment. We've got Sega 32X, Sega Genesis, or Mega Drive, uh, Sega Master System, I've only got a few on there. And then we've got, what have we got here? Some more um, Atari games. And then we've got Commodore 64. Doesn't work too well. I've only got one of these games to work, which is Paradroid. I wanted Theatre Europe to work. It sort of works, um, but doesn't work too well. Uh, and now these are all my um, arcade games I've got. These are because you have to use a separate core to use some games, which is very annoying. I was hoping it was going to be all the same one, but it's not. Um, you have to, it's a bit like trial and error, really, trying to get an arcade game to work. Some, most work, lots don't. And then we have the SNES 9X. Now, these are all games from the Super Nintendo that needed a different core to use other than the one it automatically that Hatchie automatically chooses for you to use. Uh, so you have to literally add this core and then retype a command line in. But I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Uh, and these, So these are all the games that I had to use the SNES 9X and it works perfectly with these. Uh, and that's it really. Then we've got some um, Game Boy Advance games which I put on. Right, so I'm going to show you how to add. I'm just going to get rid of this because this bit annoys me. This is just the, uh, the computer readout screen so you can get, just minimise that. I don't want to get rid of it. Right, so in here, back in going into the uh, USB memory, uh, we've got tools. Um, so look, there's all your games. Um, you've got folder images. Now I'm just going to show you this one quickly. You're going to go into here. These are folders, images that I created. I'll show you those in a moment. Um, and just get everything. So you can do lots of things with this. And we're going to come back this way. Uh, patches, you can patch some games. Uh, some of the Super Mario World hacks, um, you have to download a normal game of Super Mario World and then apply the patch. Yeah, but I've got the, if I go into this folder quickly, sorry if this is dragging on a bit, I didn't want it to. Uh, these are my boot screens that I created. I'll show those in a minute as well. So this is my copy of Super Mario World. And then we have, these are my patches. And then this is called floating patching tools. You go into here and you have to use this one, I think. I can't remember now. I don't know what's in there. I haven't opened some of these. Uh, you have to go into there and it just adds it to everything. So anyway, so that's that's it really. But if you go onto Super Mario World Hacks or something, I can't remember the, the site name now, um, you can find out. Um, it shows you what you do and you just download that folder and it tells you how to use it. It's pretty easy. Uh, right, so I'm now going to close this one because I don't need that one anymore. And we're going to concentrate on this. Now then, I've got some uh, games. Obviously, when you download them from this website, I'll show you this one quickly. Uh, so this is Emu Paradise, where I get the vast majority of my uh, game ROMs from. You just go up here and you can pick any... Um, oh, I've got to close that ad. What's comes up with horrible ads? Get out of it. Uh, so you can pick any you've got arcade system, consoles, um, anything handhelds. Uh, so you get lots. I'm going to go back. And so you've got lots of Super Mario World hacks. All you do is, let's have a look, Luigi's Adventure, actually. Which one have I got? Uh, Brutal Mario. That sounds good. So you just go into that, come all over it, and we come down past that. As you can see, it looks a very strange one. I want to look at this one, actually. I'm going to use this. Um, these are already patched by the looks of it, so I could just download that. Like so find where it is, direct download, and then just wait for it to download. And you can see it's downloaded in the bottom there. I've got two seconds left for that one. And then all you do is once it's downloaded, if you're happy with that, I can minimize this. Now then on some of my things, I create custom art. I'm gonna show you this here. Uh, this is for an F-Zero Grand Prix 2. 
um, I created this. I found the box art online and then I just added a few extra little bits um, for it. As you can see, uh, I think this is the one I needed in the end, which was Ace League. And there's a few bits. There's my um, splash screen, which I'll show you in a minute. And then these are the Super Mario World ones that I've done because I just don't like the boring folders and stuff like that. All right, so anyway, so you've downloaded them. Let's go into downloads. There we go. And then we're just going to take this and put it on the desktop up there. Close that down. And there we go. So then what we do is we extract this, like so. And then we're just going to drag it over into the box. That'll upload. See it in the background there, it's done. And then we can close that. And then what we get is this little image here of the cart. Um, but then we are going to rename this as in Brutal. Don't know if I say it's spelled Brutal, but that'll do me for the moment. And then what we're going to go, we're going to use it for the moment the um, the usual, um, the one that it's telling us to use. Or the HMOD anyway. Uh, that's this command line just here. Um, in a moment, I'll show you how to change that. So anyway, so we are going to put, I don't know if it was two players with Super Mario World. I can't remember. But anyway, well, let's have a look at some box art. I might actually leave a box art for now. So I doubt if it'll come up with anything. But you can tap the Google button. It sometimes searches for images and see if it can find anything. It don't look like it's going to find nothing. That's timed out. So it either can't find nothing or my internet connection is a bit shit. So I'll just leave it for now. Right, so let's go to our next one. Let's go back up here. Right, so let me show you the modules. So you're going to go install extra modules. And now these are all the cores that you need to um, add to your thing to get certain systems to work. Now then we've got uh, SNES 9X. I think I've downloaded the 2016 version. Um, I can't remember what exactly what. We've got PSX Rearm Neon, which is for PlayStation games. All you would do is you click the box, come down here, click OK. And then what you would do is you would add your Super Nintendo via the USB um, to your computer, and then you would hold the reset and the, turn it on. Obviously, this ain't going to do nothing. It's ain't going to power. And then you wait until it takes. Um, for the first time, you may need to download the drivers. It will come up with a little box saying, um, let me just show you if I do OK. Don't know, I can cancel this. As you said, it comes up with that. Um, providing you've installed the drivers, just do what I just said, and that will disappear, and then you'll see the box behind this one that will go like green and then when it's done it says okay all done if not install the driver and it should work that's what i had to do first time let's cancel that do you want to... yes Don't want that. right so we're going to go back to here like i say it's fairly self-explanatory um let me go back to modules and i'll show you it's going to be a bit of a long video this one isn't it anyway so you click on let's go down here so you've got Genesis plus GX, right? You're gonna, if you click on just the actual um, line, it brings up everything that it's going to play. It's going to play Sega CD, Sega 1000, whatever that is, Master System, Mega Drive, Genesis, and Game Gear games just by downloading that. And so then you can just add them. And when you download a Mega Drive ROM, it will automatically add the command line. The only ones it doesn't automatically add is arcade games. And for those, if I come down, I come down to wherever one is. I've got lots. I've got Ghosts and Goblins. Okay, you so see, you download some artwork for it using the Google button when you're happy with one. And this one works with MAME 2003. So I've had to download that um, into this internal memory of my Super Nintendo. And then I've put the command line. This is the command line you change. You from that bin slash from after that, you've just it usually has zip because obviously when you download this, you have to download it as a zip file. So you get rid of the zip and you just replace it with main 2003. If it was final burn alpha module, you would just put FBA 2012. But don't worry, in the modules, if you click on what I just done in the modules, it will tell you what to write. So let's go back here, I'll show you. Right, so, so we're gonna find that, let's find main 2003, right? So you click on here, that is the module. And then over here, it is telling you what to write. So there's your command line. And it's telling you to go bin slash main 2003. And that is it. That's all you have to do. Change that to that. And it will. if the game works with that module, it will work. I'll show you in a minute. Like I say, with what I do with arcade games is I start, I've downloaded all the main ones. Main 2000, 2003 and everything. 
and I just start with 2000 and work my way down them. There is probably an easy way you can do it um, off the actual main system, but pain in the ass. Anyway, right, so let's go back to here. So I'm going to extract this game, like so. And then we're going to bring this into this is Castlevania. I thought I downloaded these ages ago, but I didn't. Right, so that's in there. So we've got Castlevania. We're going to Google an image. Hopefully, we'll find something. Yep, there we go. Let's find a good one. Probably this one. This looks a good one. So you can just double click that, download it. That's done. It's already put in the uh, command line for me, so I don't need to change anything there. So let's go to Castlevania 3. Drag that over. Like so. Get rid of that now. Google that. Let's find a good one. Is that Castlevania 3? Yeah, it's about as best I'm looking at is this one. It's quite a clear one, isn't it? That'll do. Is that working? Yep, there we go. So then we're going to go Simon's Quest. And we're going to drag that over there. You can, if you want, probably add the zip file. You don't need to um, extract it sometimes. Um, but that's just how I was shown, so that's what I've been doing. So anyway, so we've got Castlevania 2, Simon's Quest. Now we just find a nice bit of box art that looks a good one. So we just add that. And now that is it. Um, I don't believe I've got to do anything else for the moment. Uh, so then, if you're going to put these games on your internal memory, you just go synchronize, select a game with an NES Mini, and just go from there and follow the instructions. But I'm going to export these to my USB. So I'm going to go export, and it comes up with this. So I'm going to push link to export because I don't know if you have to, but I know I am. I'm, again, I'm on the European one, so I'm going to click that, and then push OK. Then the games go into an unsorted folder. I just click into that. These are all the games. I'll come back down here. These are all my folders. Uh, Castlevania is a NES game. So stick that in there. Castlevania X is a Super Nintendo game. But I need to put that somewhere. So I'll do that one in a second. Uh, we're going to go with these. Do I want to put those two at the same time? Put those into the NES games. Now then, I need to go into my Mario World Hacks. Where are we? There they are. See, again, I've added this folder here. So I can see what they are. Um, I need to go, it's a bit annoying every time I do that. Go back again. So then we're gonna go put the brutal one in there. Then I need to go to the Super Nintendo games and put Castlevania X into here, which is A to M. Again, <clears throat> there is another thing with this. All you really want in one particular folder is 30 games, really no more than that. Uh, because I was putting about 60 games on and I kept getting a CA error message sometimes. It is nothing important. It just, it just that means it's a storage issue um, because it couldn't handle the amount of games on one on the screen at one time. So I've tried to limit them down to about 30 uh, just so it stays on the screen. And that is it. Um, then all I do is I go back up here. We're going to go to my unsorted folder and get rid of this now. Otherwise, that is just going to appear on the screen with nothing. And then I push OK. And then it's going to do this. And it says, this process cannot be done, but it doesn't matter, because that's what I want. So we're going to do that. Wait for that. So as I said, it's building the folder structure and everything, building menu. It takes a minute or so, as soon as it's done. It's only because they've put, got so many games. Um, there are so many games on here that work that you wouldn't have thought would work. Um, PlayStation 1 games, even. There's a great pack for that to get the graphics looking really crisp. Uh, right, so anyway, so that is done. Right, and that's it. And then when you're all done, you just close everything and you're ready to rock and roll. Right, well, I'm going to plug everything in now. Actually, I'll show you what I've got to do for that. So what I'll do is I'll disconnect the USB. Um, right, okay, so can I move that now? And all we do is we take my little thing Stick that in the right way, is that it? That goes in there like that. Uh, I've got to get my little thing. One thing is going to go in there, and that is going to go in the back of the Super Nintendo. And that is it, and then we turn it on. Right, I'll be back in one second. Right, so here we are. I've plugged everything in ready. Uh, right, there was one other thing I forgot to show you on the uh, computer there. Um, you can actually transfer all the HMODs instead of to the internal memory of the Super Nintendo. You can transfer them to the USB. That can be a little bit problematic. It's not so 
bad to do, but I did run into a little bit of trouble with it. Um, and if you put them on there, you can't exactly delete them off. Um, what you have to do is delete everything off and start again. Uh, that's when you should make a backup. Before you do it, make a backup of it and put it in a separate folder. So if you do make a mistake, you can just delete it off and then go to your backup and put that back on your thing and start from there. Um, because I did that luckily and it didn't work uh, mainly because I was using this bloody thing and I swear it was a piece of crap um, once I used that one it seemed to work better, better and only do a few at a time uh, but again there's a tutorial on that I think Pattern Plays does a good one for that uh, yes right okay so and there is another one with the advanced music hack you can put your own music on the title screen so here we go Let's spark it up and see where we are. Here we are. So there's my splash screen that I put on. As you can tell, I put a lot of um, the, some of the old WWF music as well because um, that's what I was playing. When I was playing the old Super Nintendo, I was watching the wrestling and so I associated that with it. I put loads of different stuff on. Can't go wrong with a big boss man though. Anyway, I'll listen to that too much. Maybe I should, um, let's, let's see what other ones we've got on here. Because what it does is you put enough in the folder and then it just picks one at random. Uh, let's see what else we've got. I'll put a couple of good ones as well. There we go. Let's see what we get this time. Look at that, what, what is this? Um, oh, I'll let you figure that out, so you must know who it is. Right, so anyway, right, so we're here. We are in the folder Super Nintendo A to M. Let's see what I put back on there. Make sure Castlevania X did reload back up. Yeah, there it is. That's brilliant. That's why that's there. Uh, right, okay. Um, let's go back. Let's show you what I've got on here. So apart from loads of Super Nintendo games, where are we going to come out of this folder? Um, there we go. So you're in A to M, N to Z, and then you go back to the main menu. And this is my totally main menu. So we got lots of the original games and a few others I like. Chrono Trigger, never played it. Not really into uh, adventure games or whatever, or RPGs, but I've heard it's really good, so I wanted it on here. Um, we've got F-Zero, I've got this new one. Let me show you this. This is uh, one that I downloaded the other day. Didn't even know this one existed. Uh, this came out on the, is it the BSX Japan Intelliv satellite vision or something like that uh, 95 or 97 well, it says 97 there so and so we're going to go into this it's got new cars and everything which is kind of cool going to go that one the blue thunder and it's got this new track which i'm going to show you this i have to put it on beginner because this is hard i can't even get them like i used to but this is mute city 4 this is a completely new track i never played this one before and it's Damn hard. I did beat it the other day, the other night though. Here we go. Now this is where it's this is annoying as hell because you cannot avoid these speed ups. Oh look at these, Jesus Christ. Do you get the idea? So these, because this is the ace league, which goes after the king league of the old game. I was a massive F Zero fan back in the day. There we go, there we go, oh, there we go. We've got to come all the way over it. Hopefully, get on that one. I say you do that. Whoa, you douche. Anyway, you get the idea with that. And you can just do a soft reset by pushing down and select, and it'll take you back to this screen. Uh, so let's see what we've got. We've got Earthbound, come this way, but more. Now then, uh, I wanted to give a big shout out to the Games Freezer. Uh, he is doing a series of uh, videos on um, some of the football games that were on the Super Nintendo back in the day. Because I've been trying to find a good one, because I used to love International Superstar Soccer on the uh, N64. played that game to death. But I never played on the Super Nintendo because I wasn't really into football back then. Uh, so he's going through it and there were some really shockingly bad ones and to be honest this is the the best one that uh, I found or he's found <laughs> uh, 
Um, and so I downloaded this one. This is an international superstar. He's actually superstar soccer deluxe. I don't know why I've got the picture for not. <laughs> I can just fix that. So anyway, that is a good one. Um, and we've got all the Mega Man games, which I like Mega Man and stuff like that. So we're going to go through that. There you go. Super Mario All-Stars, that should have been on here from day one, from my opinion. We've got Super Ghouls and Ghosts, I like that game. Super Mario World, stuff like that. So Star Wars, Super Street Fighter 2. Where's Super Street Fighter Turbo? Where is that one? Here we go, it's around somewhere, isn't it? There it is. Just going to play this game. I used to love this game. I was shit hot at this game back in the day. Here we go. I'll be my fight rejoice. Turn the turbo up. Can't remember the cheat to turn it up to 10 stars, but that was, gets a bit silly then. Oh, uh, no, hang on, which one do we use? Star, isn't it? Um, my fight as a choice was, you had Sagat, Sagat, M. Bison, these four, to be honest. And, of course, I forgot to mention this one the other day, Zangief. I was pretty good at Zangief. Um, but we're going to go with Balrog. I used to like Balrog, humiliating all my friends by beating them with Balrog. Let's see how good I am against the computer. Oh, you don't you fuck. Oh, shit. Come on, get some ice. As you can see, the computer is a different kettle of fish. As you can tell, I haven't played this game for a while, that's why I'm losing. Fuck you, computer. There we go, got him in the end. Anyway, that's enough of that one. Right, so let's go to some different games. Go all the way down here to the menu. Right, so these are my Super Mario World. Now I created the custom boxes here. That was the new one I just downloaded. Uh, we got Super Mario World. The I Hate You one's quite fine. Um, super hard, super bad. Wow. Uh, we've got this one. Some well strange ones here. This one ain't too bad. Um, that one's all right. I don't know if I've played some of these. Can't remember now. Right, let's see if I can get that brutal one to work. Might need to use the SNES 9X one. Oh, that no, works. That's fine. Here we go. I don't know what's going to happen, though. Yeah, it seems to be glitching a bit. Oh, it's from Japanese, I don't know. As you can see, you've got a slightly different map screen. Looks like some of the other ones. Anyway, there we go. So let's have a look. Let's play through the first level and see what happens. Oh, you Oh, I don't know what. Anyway, so you get the idea with all those. And so it's basically the same with all those. Uh, then we're going to come back. Oh, I'll show you a few more little bits. So you've got the Super Nintendo games where I've just been. Sega CD. I'll just show you that one quickly. Um, with these ones, to put these games on here, you have to do a couple of things. When you download it, you've two things you've got to do. I can't remember if I've done it for a while. Um, I haven't played that yet. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm not overly keen on some of the Sega CD games, to be honest. Uh, yeah, I'll leave them for now. Uh, then what else have we got? We've got Sega CD now and then PlayStation 1. I'll come back to PlayStation 1. Do that one again. We've got TurboGrafx-16, Nintendo. Let's see if I'll put Castlevania, so much I've turned up. Uh, we've got some of these. This is pretty good, so most of these games. Yeah, there we go. There's all the Simon's Quest and everything like that. We've got Lee, Gradius, Gradius 2, the Japanese one. Um, we've got Gremlins 2, it's a play that, I'll play that. Loads of different ones. Oh, that game there, Jesus Christ, that game. 
Um, and we've got Mega Man 1, 2, 3, 1 to 6. Still got to get some new artwork for that, I'll keep meaning to. And we've got the Nintendo World Championships, I wanted that one. Um, and so for all oh, these Robocop games are terrible. Right, there we go. And we've got this one. Oh my god, that game there. Piece of crap. Right, so then, oh, so we've got Zoids game. Yeah. Right, so then, what do I like to do? Nintendo, we've got Mega Drive, Master System, uh, Game Boy Advance, Commodore 64, I'm not even going to bother. And you've got 32X, they work pretty well. Atari 2600, Commodore, again, that's a little bit dodgy. And then we're going to go into my main ones. As you can see, I created some of these fires. This is my new thing that I'm doing. Driving games, beat em ups, shoot em ups. Some of these shoot em ups are fantastic. Uh, now then, what I'm putting in this one is when um, all the new ones that I download, whether I can get them to work or not. This Darius Gaiden looks great. Uh, the sound just, I don't think the, the system can handle it, unfortunately. I haven't got that to work yet. Defender won't go past a certain screen. Nebulous Ray, that looks a good one. Turbo Outrun, I haven't tried that yet. Uh, this one is just a weird game, but it, I can't get the controls to it. it, might need a configuration. Ah, uh, yeah, but all these ones just work pretty well. Like, these will work. Um, like so, you've got Ghouls and Ghosts, Golden Axe. Now, these are the ones I actually made the box artwork for myself. I sort of copied the design for um, a Super Nintendo box and made the only thing up. Um, I was going to do it for all of them, but I started downloading loads and loads and loads. There's a few are done. Um, yeah, it's, oh, <laughs> just, it just got a bit, what's the word? I'm so glad I got these working, Tron and Deadly Discs, because there are there were two games I liked. Windjammers is good, and that game there I played when I was 13, never saw it again, and I just literally found it the other day, which is Wonderboy. And there we go, right, we're going to show you one more thing before we finish up. We're going to go into... Uh, I think I went the wrong way, actually. Uh, where would I at? Right, anyway, we'll show I don't think that worked by looks at it. That all right. Anyway, right, so we're going to go back this way. Right, we are going to go to the PlayStation. Right, there's only a few of these. I have This one works. Can't get Transmetals to work. Uh, Destruction Derby works. Destruction Derby 2 works. Can't get Doom to work. Can't get FIFA to work. Can't remember Mortal Kombat. R-Type works brilliantly. Ridge Racer works. Can't get that to work. That works. Can't get that to work. Wipeout works. Um, which one shall I play? I'm going to play Wipeout. So this will load up pretty well in this game. And I can't believe this plays it so well. Now, PlayStation games you can't add to your Nintendo internal memory due to the fact of the sheer size of the ROMs. Uh, there is a way you can rip out all the full motion video and the music out of it to make them smaller, so you can just play the game. Um, but that kind of takes it away from it, I think. But when you're putting it on a USB stick, you, you've got loads of them. So you can just leave it as is, and it will play it. Right, so as you can see, it's playing it really well here. Let's just get past this screen. Because some of them won't go past the center screen, I can't figure out why. Right, on, on this screen here that you're looking at, it looks pretty good, but the graphics look a little dated. But I'm gonna, there is a way you can get around this. And I had to download the latest version of RetroArch, which you need. I forgot to mention that earlier as well. Right, so we're going to go one player. Then, um, now, it's probably easier if I had a PlayStation 2 controller, because you need the extra two uh, top buttons. Whereas obviously the Super Nintendo controller's only got two top buttons, but you need the four, if you know what I mean, two on each side. So anyway, we are, there is a hack which you can do to make the graphics look a little bit better. As you can see, they're a little bit dated. I'm just going to play this for a bit. Um, which button is it? Right. Right, so as you can see, it's going along here now. Then we are going to go into our uh, retro arc options. Now then, where do we go? We go down to, is it here? So we're going to go down to options, push the A button, go in. 
actually let's go this way now where do we want to go we want to go you need to go here in the enhanced resolution speed hack we're going to turn that on then we're going to go enhanced resolution you're going to turn that on then we're going to come out and it should be looking a little bit better oh there we go that should work that looks a little bit better to me does it not really <laughs> But there we go. Oh, maybe I've not done it right. I don't know. Um, let's have a look. That's why, because I turned it, came off it and turned it off. Right, here we go. Right, ready? This should be better this time. Actually, um, let's go back. Uh, how do I get out of it? No, the zoom in a bit. There we go. Oh, that's better. The graphics look a hell of a lot crisper now. And don't look so dated or whatever. It could just be the resolution on the actual Super Nintendo. Let's see, yeah. But anyway, look at this. It plays really well. A good frame rate. It might just be a tad slower than the original PlayStation. But you wouldn't notice it. But certainly not with a game like Destruction Derby. I was terrified. This game is. I mean, I was a big F Zero fan, so when this came out on the PlayStation, my brother had it. Oh, I did like this game. But I'll keep it in the bloody sides. Oh, you little. I'm missing the bat on. Because I downloaded one version of this game but it played without the sound um, so I had to find another version there is another site called like Love Roms um, you can get it off there for example but you have to be careful because some of the ROMs that I've downloaded um, aren't exactly correct for some reason I don't know why. there's a lot of tutorials out there of how you add PlayStation games to the Super Nintendo Mini but there we go so I'm going to come out of that oh no I need to go back in that and turn those two options off. Let's see if I can do it. Don't know if it'll go back in. Sometimes because it uses up all the cash or whatever it's called, it doesn't always want it right. So I need to go back and go to options and turn those two objects off. Because otherwise if I load up another game it will load them with these because these options, you know, I remember it. So you need to go back and turn these off. So I'll turn that one off. Turn that one off. There we go. Uh, where am I going wrong? Oh, come on. Way. There we go. That's it, and we can come back out of there. Is that work? And there we have it. That is it. Like, all these games work pretty much. Um, you can do little certain things to it. There is a way you can get into different options, but I'm totally sure how to do that. But there we go, so that is my video on um, hacking the Super Nintendo Mini. Um, any questions, just feel free to ask, but I'll try and put all those links in the bottom there. Um, some guys are really good. Um, big shout out again to the Games Freezer, KMDF Manic, Garib, Gavin Horrocks, Pattern Plays. They have helped me no end. Um, maybe not personally, but especially KMDF Manic, he really is a good help and answered lots of my questions. Uh, the other guys, just put out some good videos and are really explanatory. Um, for example, KMDF Manic, he, he's obviously, you can tell he works with computers or something because the way he explains it, um, you know, need to know what you're doing uh, when he's explaining it because <laughs> he's so fast. Um, whereas the other guys are a bit, you know, doing it for people like me who are a bit, um, well, I don't work with computers. Um, yeah, anyway, but you go what I mean. Uh, right, so there we go. Right, so this has been Graham the Collect 75. Uh, don't forget to check out those channels. Um, and just that's it. I shall see you all next time. Bye for now.